Welcome to the second section of the course, the advanced features for enhancing your blog. In the previous section, we saw how to build a blog application. In this section, we'll first see how to send emails with Django. Later, we move on to creating forms and handling them in views. We'll also see how to create forms from models. Further, we'll integrate third-party applications and build complex query sets in the end. Here we are at the first video of this section, Create and Manage Forms. In this video, we'll allow users to share posts by sending them by email. For that, we'll create forms and handle forms in views. So let's get started. We'll see how to share posts by sending them by email. Take a short time to think about how you would use views, URLs and templates to create this functionality using what you've learned in the previous section. Now, check what you need to allow your users to send posts by email. You'll need to create a form for users to fill in their name and email the email recipient and optional comments. Create a view in the views.py file that handles the posted data and sends the email. Add a URL pattern for the new view in the urls.py file of the blog application. Create a template to display the form. Now let's see how to create forms with Django. Let's start by building the form to share posts. Django has a built-in forms framework that allows you to create forms in an easy manner. The forms framework allows you to define the fields of your form, specify the way they have to be displayed, and indicate how they would have to validate input data. Django forms framework also offers a flexible way to render forms and handle the data. Django comes with two base classes to build forms. Form allows you to build standard forms. Model form allows you to build forms to create or update model instances. First, create a forms.py file inside the directory of your blog application and add this code. This is your first Django form. Take a look at the code. We've created a form by inheriting the base form class. We use different field types for Django to validate fields accordingly. Forms can reside anywhere in your Django project, then inside a forms.py file for each application. The name field is a character field. This type of field is rendered as an input type equals text HTML element. Each field type has a default widget that determines how the field is displayed in HTML. The default widget can be overridden with the widget attribute. In the comments field, we use a text area widget to display it as a text area HTML element inside of the default input element. Field validation also depends on the field type. For example, the email and to fields are email field. Both fields require a valid email address, otherwise the field validation will raise a forms.validation error exception, and the form will not validate. Other parameters are also taken into account for form validation. We define a maximum length of 25 characters for the name field, and make the comments field optional with required equals false. All of this is also taken into account for field validation. The field types used in this form are only a part of the Django form fields. For a list of all form fields available, you can visit this link. Now let's see how to handle forms in views. You have to create a new view that handles the form and sends an email when it's successfully submitted. Edit the views.py file of your blog application and add these lines of code to it. This view works as shown. We define the post underscore share view that takes the request object and the post ID as parameters. We use the get object or 404 shortcut to retrieve the post by ID and make sure that the retrieved post has a published status. We use the same view for both displaying the initial form and processing the submitted data. We differentiate if the form was submitted or not based on the request method. We're going to submit the form using post. We assume that if we get a get request, an empty form has to be displayed. And if we put a post request, the form was submitted and needs to be processed. Therefore, we use request method equals equals post to distinguish between the two scenarios. The following is the process to display and handle the form. When the view is loaded initially with a get request, we create a new form instance that will be used to display the empty form in the template form equal to post form. 2. The user fills in the form and submits it via post. Then we create a form instance using the submitted data that's contained in this. 3. After this, we validate the submitted data using the form isValid method. 
This method validates the data introduced in the form and returns true if all fields contain valid data. If any field contains invalid data, then isValid returns false. You can see a list of validation errors by accessing form.errors. 4. If the form is not valid, we render the form in the template again with the submitted data. We'll display validation errors in the template. 5. If the form is valid, we retrieve the validated data accessing form.cleaned underscore data. This attribute is a dictionary of form fields and their values. If your form data does not validate, cleaned underscore data will only contain the valid fields. Now, you need to learn how to send emails with Django to put everything together.